it's Adaptive Goddess, and today I'm here with my mom as kind of a, as a surprise because when this video comes out, it will be the day before Mother's Day, and so I thought it would be great if we kind of talked about our relationship a little bit and kind of had a conversation about like effective communication, what's kind of worked between us, maybe the ups and downs and me growing up and you having to be my mom. Mm -hmm. Getting um, to be your mom. Yes. A privilege to be your mom. So this is kind of a surprise, I know. Thank you. <laughs> but this is kind of part one of my Mother's Day gift to you. <gasps> oh, wow. Part one, then <laughs> part there's one. a part two. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think just kind of us having a conversation. Yeah. So. Yeah, really nice. And sharing it with um, a bunch of your followers to maybe bring some insight to Adaptive Goddess. First of all, what a neat um, concept that you've been following through with. Mm -hmm. um, sharing experiences in how to approach life in an adaptive way way that um, uh, can can help a bunch of people, neurotypicals and um, diverse, neurodiverse. And I've been learning a lot from it too, always growing and, and, and experiencing new um, ways of dealing with something that maybe didn't work before or celebrating the things that do work. Yeah, um, I know you've been in a few of these videos for like my request, or I know you you have requested to be in a few of them to kind of direct the conversation because I am hoping to reach not only autistic adults but like parents because this is a very nuanced kind of area, especially being autistic um, in society, especially like a U.S. society where it is still really stigmatized. Yeah. And um, the nuanced part is that it's always, it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many different experiences. I, I, I know when you guys were younger, uh, my parenting experience was very frustrating because there are these um, um, programs, Love and Logic, and that came to school. And then they talked about it. And ooh, I felt like, oh, wow, I have a new approach. And that sounds so positive and lovely. And then I did that and it didn't work at all. Maybe I approached it incorrectly or, or didn't do exactly the way that they were um, recommending it, but it, it just fell flat or, or busted up and, and turned out really badly. And those kind of things are really frustrating because it makes you, the parent, feel insufficient mm -hmm. when there's somebody sitting there going, yeah, this is very fabulous and I have a wonderful relationship with my children and made all the problems go away and it's kind of like really then what am I doing wrong but I think what I'm realizing especially like with your adaptive goddess is to say there are many many different ways of approaching it and some may work and some may may not and some may work and then not work or mm -hmm. don't work and then work and I think for us what I think is neat is looking back things didn't work and then they worked and we built on and then it worked and then it worked and mm -hmm. and you changed and yeah. I changed and you grew and and um now it's just kind of a neat thing where we can be on camera <laughs> and have a tea party and and celebrate uh our our relationship that's yeah. just constantly growing but we had a lot of um there um, were a lot struggles of struggles yeah. that we were willing to love each other through mm -hmm. and I think at the end of the day if loving each other through these um, tumultuous experiences is all it takes to come out um, okay. Yeah. And, and like, I mean, we're approaching 30 years yeah. here, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, almost. to being together, ex exploring life together. And, yes. And just recently I realized um, maybe to the next 30 years, mm -hmm. it's... Um, I, I feel like the first 30 years we're surviving, mm -hmm. surviving our, our life and our relationship together. And maybe the next 30 years are about living the next, the, the living into our lives together yeah. and, and living them, not feeling like we're surviving it. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Don't <laughs> That's you think? definitely the goal. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to that. And like, I remember 
when we'll call them the dark times. <laughs> All right, I remember there's some dark specs. Yeah. Um, but I remember during one of the dark specs, and I must have been a teenager, because I was just starting DBT therapy mm-hmm. and still trying to like figure it out. Um, I remember one time you were with me and I was trying to talk about like my experience and what was going on and I was like, yeah, if I say like, I need a hug, like, can you, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I know that I need to be grounded and I need that hug and I need that compression Mm -hmm. to come back. And you're like, well, I know you were hitting me. I'm like, I know, but like, I'm floating away and I'm trying to grab on to, Mm -hmm. to something to come back. And you're like, okay. And I know the next time that that situation happened, you did, you hugged me and I got through it. And then I developed tools to stay more grounded so that I didn't necessarily need that hug Mm -hmm. and I can do it myself. But I definitely remember one thing that I think grew from our relationship was a level of trust that like, if I'm in the middle of a tantrum or a panic attack or a meltdown, like I'm not doing these things to hurt you. I'm trying to stay here right and not disassociate right and I think that's hard I remember that thinking I don't feel like hugging you yeah. necessarily being yeah. like a porcupine or some other prickly thing that I now have to hug um, and I think that's part of that loving each other through it mm-hmm. to be able to recognize the adaption of a situation we're adapting to a different situation so that um, we can work through it and 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 be together healthy and sometimes that's doing the counterintuitive or the thing yeah try this thing oh really that That doesn't doesn't seem but it's tools that you have that you you're conditioned um, through your upbringing through my upbringing through society to say this is used then this is used mm-hmm. here this is used that a hug is a, a yeah. comforting or a you know a positive and so that doesn't necessarily feel like oh wait I don't feel like hugging her because she's really ups- uh, making me upset making me feel upset but to turn that around and to be willing to turn things on your head and use see tools in a new light see um, um, behaviors in a different, um, um, perspective that may have a different outcome or the desired outcome Yeah, using something really different. I think just recently I came across this idea that, um, as our relationship is changing from parenting mm-hmm. to mother daughter, um, friendship, yeah, enriching yeah. relationship. I mean, I'm always going to be oh, a parent, course. but but more m- mutual um, 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 re- reciproc- mm-hmm. reciprocity where um, I would still be on your case about something. You should do yeah. this and you should pay that. And you, why, why aren't you doing this? And you should set an alarm for that. And, yeah. da, 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 da. and, and I, I'm just recently becoming aware that that really doesn't work because we all know our shoulds and shouldn'ts. You know yeah. what you should be doing and not be doing. And if you don't, you'll find out very quickly. Yes. <laughs> um, um, and that that's not really my role anymore. But how do you approach something where you might see a concern with an adult mm-hmm. child and go, oh, God, I, I hope she's thinking about that. And I'm I'm thinking that the approach that works better for me now is to say how stressed out I feel about mm-hmm. watching you do that. It makes me feel really nervous when I see you buying a lot of stuff that yeah. is just stuff and then I don't know are you you know going to be okay or I'm worried that you're constantly running late and in a rush and so instead of saying you should leave sooner you should do this it's like I get nervous when I hear that you're, you know, in a rush Mm -hmm. when you do certain things. um, I don't know, um, you know, what, what, what is that about? And Mm -hmm. finding more out about that rather than even questioning, are you thinking about when you're doing that? Because that's still the should. 
Because mm-hmm. it's just because I'm asking you, are you thinking about your time? And are yeah. you kind of, it's still, you should be thinking about mm-hmm. your time. You should, it's just couched in a, in a question. Yeah. Whereas when it's, gosh, it makes me feel worried about you and I get real concerned and I have these worry thoughts. Can you tell me a little bit more so I understand better and don't my, let my imagination run away? And yeah. maybe then as you're telling me, um, those feelings could come up again because it still sounds like you're really not aware of how destructive your behavior mm-hmm. is. Or, and I can say, oh, even as you're telling me, I'm starting to feel really anxious and yeah. nervous. What is, wh- why is, you know, I'm telling you when I hear that you say, da, 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 it makes me feel anxious yeah. because that just sounds a little bit yeah. stressful. But also it gives a you to the chance to hear yourself explain things to me where you yourself maybe say, did I just tell her that I do da 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 da? That's probably not a good idea. Maybe I yeah. should change that. And you're telling, because we tell ourselves the shoulds all the time. Yeah. Right? And um, I think now in our relationship, there's an, a lot of trust to be able to say, if I tell her, it makes me feel really, really sad when you yell at your brother in a really certain way. Yeah. I know you're going to walk away and go, and it's not even that I'm laying on the mom guilt as much mm-hmm. as I'm just saying it breaks my heart to know that you're, yeah. because I know you don't want to be like that. Yeah. And I don't need to say you shouldn't talk that way to him because you know that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that re- helps, just invites you to reflection. Mm-hmm. Um, and definitely, I think what changed in our relationship in like terms of communication was a lot of the like I statements because I remember, like, when we were talking, I would always say, like, you're not listening, you're not listening. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, a lot of the time, like, I felt you were either putting, like, words in my mouth or you weren't really understanding the, the point I was trying to make. And so I think when we got to the, like, I feel blank when blank happened. So, like, I feel frustrated when you don't do your chores Mm -hmm. then it's like oh like I'm sorry like let me do them now Mm -hmm. or like man I really don't want to do this chore anymore I've been doing it for like yada yada years can I pick a different chore right so let you be in the driver's seat too a little bit and give a little bit more of like the 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 feelings part back to me right and I could definitely then know for like certain are you really hearing what I'm trying to say are you um validating yeah. you am I recognizing yeah. you as your whole self and I think that's something too the whole self is something that I'm growing into and just like okay autism is a picture that we're mm-hmm. talking about and and growing into that and recognizing all the pieces mm-hmm. and um, recognizing them in myself too and celebrating them, yeah. celebrating all the pieces, not trying to mm, fix them or make them go away. But uh, And I think that's what's so neat about Adaptive Goddess. It's not about fixing um, the neurodiversity. It's living into them yeah, and living into them in a way that works yeah. with other parts of society so that it's not to fix it to blend in or to be just like all, all the other parts of society, but to enrich your life, to participate in those things that you want mm-hmm. in such a way that work, not yeah. where you then feel like a survivor or, or need to survive or anything so that it's just, I'm living with this. Yeah. And so that you can actually like, thrive and change the world because I mean if you look at anybody yeah and if you look at anybody in history I mean like Albert Einstein probably had autism like Dan Aykroyd has autism like there are so many people even throughout history who have or probably have autism or another type of neurodiversity that really changed the course of history not only just like science, but like of history itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And society and and what the norms are and how to um, live an exciting life. Yeah. And um, I think the key is just 
finding that switch from I'm in survival mode mm -hmm. to I'm part of this and I am participating and I am living and I am not afraid and I am not marginalized mm -hmm. and I am not um, wrong or or anything of those kind of things because then that frees up all those all that brain capacity and all that that those emotions that are dragging you down and sucking the survival mode sucking sucking your energy you can turn into thriving and changing and and vibrancy and yeah. and being a mover and a shaker and and wanting to do things yeah so that's exciting yeah and i think that's where we have headed yeah. and and totally excited about the the next um and i know that like along the way even with the dark specks we've always celebrated the win correct like we like the 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 Christmas tree incident turned into a really fun um, memory of <laughs> <laughs> how Natasha gets things done when they need to get done and they um, do and yeah a lot of like the dark specks have kind of turned and that's into not really a dark speck no but like a lot of the dark specks the gray speck the gray speck <laughs> um, they've kind of turned into like either a learning it moment yeah, or to look back on aha uh -huh. or uh, or aha moments or even just like little inside jokes of yeah. like remember how upset you got when yeah. you didn't get Samantha this yeah. DVD and it's like and the hilarious part is when it's like what no I didn't <laughs> I didn't have a problem that the Christmas tree was gone. And it's like, uh... Yeah, you did. I think we did show, we show the video. But it's kind of like putting it in a place mm -hmm. that is either neutral or even just not necessarily suppressing it, but just kind of forgetting it. It's yeah. so much nicer than having it in this negative bag that ends up being so heavy and so drowning that you're like, surviving all those negative feelings. And, like, that's one of the things that I like about some of the DBT skills is, like... Find that silver lining. Say like, oh, well, the last time I had a tantrum wasn't as bad as the time before. And that's actually one of the things like I tell my clients who have tantrums and they have like property destructive tantrums is like, at least this time you didn't run away. Exactly. You didn't get yourself into worse trouble or into more problematic situations. Right. You... Yes, you were destructive and that's not okay, but I'm celebrating the fact that you were able to only destroy your room. Right. Like, you can found Moving it. from those, mm -hmm. those into a positive that, that always has so much better outcome. Yeah. So, here's to our... <laughs> our Mother's Day celebration and I'm excited to find out what part two is and we'll let you know next time and um, to 30 more years of l live mode and out of the survival drowning letting our emotions and our problems drown yes. us and feel like we're surviving yes. because we did a good job surviving we deserve living now yes yay so comment down below uh, what is your favorite thing to do with either your mom or a female figure in your life? I, hands down, know what our favorite thing to do is. Mm, I know, me too. We need to schedule Ready? next. One. Oh, God, I hope it's the same. Two. <laughs> I have to re Three. if it's wrong. You ready? It is it's go to the spa. Day. What is your favorite thing to do with your mom or your favorite a female person in your life? Um, so that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Gently tap that like button. Yes. And subscribe. <laughs> and uh, from Adoptive Goddess and her mom, we want to wish you a very happy... Happy Mother's yes. Day. Happy female power woman in another person's life day. Yes. So that's it for the video. Bye. Bye.